What is good? Mm. Ooh, quick pop and a slow pop. In a weak pop. Yeah. To craft seltzer. Not a strong pop. You stone cold in that thing for a second. <laughs> You're gonna if I had bang two, another one, them together unless <laughs> we get this thing cracking. Because this, this right here, this is the only draft strategy you'll need in 2023. <laughs> Tell, got, me, more. Tell got, me more. Tell me more. I got to know more. We got the bipod working. No tripod. Jay Wayne ones and twos. Your boy CM ready to roll. Case or, cam, uh, case cam, case cam. Where's oh, ADP cam. <laughs> we're, we're, uh, case cam. We're ready to roll. Oh, yeah, that's the ADP. Yeah, check it out. Ready check to it roll, out. ready that's to roll. ADP. So, um, we're going to explore this in a few different ways. We've been doing a lot of mocks, so we're going to kind of come on and, and start giving you kind of breakdowns and our thoughts on a lot of these because I think there's a lot of good things to learn at a bunch of different points in these mocks. But in general, I just want to kind of go over how I've been feeling over the last year or two of the best strategy to draft your team. Um, you know, as the styles ebb and flow, the draft ch changes each year, uh, whether it's drastic or minuscule. If you've been at this long enough, you've seen those changes happen. Uh, right now, wide receiver is king. Uh, when we were growing up, it was running back and it was uphill both ways in the snow to school <laughs> you know that's just how it went you know you, there's nothing you could tell me any shoeless different. shoe out uh, for sure yeah barefoot <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you know probably just so many books in your backpack just so many <laughs> like, stupid nobody amount. cared about scoliosis yeah um but the nfl has changed uh and so should your fantasy drafting style uh but like i said right now the thing is is to have a bunch of wide receivers under that 26 27 year old threshold and cornerstone af after that it's starting to get super yucky um you know it's not sexy you know and you don't want to be labeled the idiot or the boomer you better not have any of those half dead guys on your team when you're drafted in your startup which you know to a point i i don't necessarily disagree with and it's actually like i said led to uh the style i kind of most prefer prefer and i really love the idea of using the trend in favor for me to build a winning team not just the sexy dynasty twitter team uh but the idea here is to build the sexy dynasty twitter team and then use it to your advantage to then make it into a winning team because that roster alone that everybody shows off on twitter typically not going to score that many points and typically not going to win that many championships the shots fire um but like i said because the bigger pundits are kind of pushing this, which again, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with it. Don't, don't, you don't have to go so hard against it. I think drafting this way can give you the most value with your league mates and keep you the most attractive to your league mates. Uh, Cause that's really flexible. what it's flexible, right? Like water. You want to be, you know, the guy who everybody's coming to. Cause they're like, damn, every time they're looking for a guy and he's younger because everybody's talking him up, you got him. Um, and you, and there's going to be that's going to ebb and flow through the season as well. But if you can put enough of those guys on your team, it's going to make you attractive. And then again, the last part of this formula is going to be the, you don't you can't just stay with that sexy roster that looks good on paper. The willingness to trade and be active at the right time is going to be crucial for taking advantage of this strategy. So if you want if you if you're not a big trader, then this strategy probably isn't for you. You should just go ahead and draft some of those older guys when it makes some sense and just get those points on your roster because right now it does seem like the state of fantasy is almost fucking allergic to actual points on your roster it's got to be the sexy younger guys and as soon as one of those sexy younger guys does anything it, like you might want to just ship them off for the the three tiers down and, and next we're not sure but you know we told you to draft that guy and now so get rid of garrett wilson which you know in earlier shows we've, we've kind of talked about so we don't need to go down that road but like you know Najee harris for example a guy who all he does is go out there and be score fantasy points when healthy last year was not healthy but the back half of the season was awesome first year out there was fantastic did it got a ton of usage but because some efficiency metrics point to that he isn't awesome nope everybody just thinks he's mid and he's replaceable and yada and Jalen Warren's coming for him and look I like Jalen Warren and I think Jalen Warren who's getting full bell cow roles at this point but when he came back at the end of the season 
I believe it was like 69 uh, 31 or something like that for uh, Najee Snap to, shares. to, to, to uh, Jalen Warren. And don't quote me on that. I'm just kind of pulling that. Snap uh, shares. Somewhere around there. And, and Najee was awesome and he scored points. And because some metrics point to that he's quote unquote inefficient, that, that he's just expected, the, he's run the, over, expected. He's expected. the doormat for a bunch, of, a bunch of people. And it's just fucking wild to me. Like we got a running back here who can score points. Anyway, uh, I digress. And the, the point of this is not to necessarily draft Najee in the way that I'm yeah. going to go ahead and tell you, but, right. but to then go acquire well, Najee for plus. In the fourth round is your or fifth round and, and is your can, RB1. And, and right, and I'm not saying that this is the only way you, to you do gotta it. you got to have a hero, I think. You, you need do, a hero. You do need a hero, and, <laughs> and, and you do need to be flexible throughout the draft, and if it works out and you're in a certain spot where you can get Najee, he might be your guy in this draft, but uh, I'll dive in and give you an example. And, uh, you know, Big Co. a while ago in the offseason said, let's switch from best player available to best asset available, which is kind of what yeah. we're going to kind of do here. So we're going from uh, BPA to bah, yeah. and that's and we want the goat. You know, that's what we're right. all that's what we're all doing. Right. Here. So. so my two cents on this would be that know your room, know your league mates. If you don't, this is definitely a, a good way to go about it. If you do know your league mates, like I know if I get into a league with some people, I know it's going to be and you could tell when you're in the draft what's happening. If right. a bunch of RBs go off first, then you're probably going to get the, some value here, you know? Sure. But like you just got to kind of ebb and flow with the draft, but like going in and getting young wide receivers that have or haven't popped yet is never going to be a bad thing cuz right. but to do that, you do need to be willing to trade. And right. you do need to be very active and be looking at who's trading and what trades are going down and be on top of those things, sending out offers. Like you, you got to be an active owner. Otherwise, you'll end up waiting around for a lot of these guys and, and miss on the booms. And, right. and, and then and that'll ebb and flow. Just because a guy booms right. doesn't mean you need to ship him. If it's a guy that you really like and, the situa- and you got him at a good value and the situation played out the way you want it, and now he's actually going to help you win, then you don't have to trade the guy. Right. But it, you do need to be active, and, and, and that's the best way to own your dynasty team anyways. Is Regardless. To, right. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I agree, and we will, like I said, we will come back, and we're going to talk about a, a but being at a bunch of different spots and a bunch of different drafts, and and how you know I was maybe thinking this when I was going in, but but the draft went this way, and I had to ebb and flow. Now in this particular case, and in a lot of these cases, I find myself with a, a similar uh, board. If I if I really want to be, I can be somewhere in this neighborhood of what I'm drafting. So. Uh, on this particular draft, I was in the one, two. So I had Josh Allen first. It's a super flex tight end premium, which is pretty much what we're always talking about. What our ADP is based off of um, what our mocks are, are typically doing. We'll, we'll throw some one quarterbacks and yada, yada, yada in there. But, uh, you know, so I had Josh Allen at the one, two. And then I took Brees Hall at the two eleven. Uh, and this is a third round reversal. So it works a little different. Third um, round reversal. You go the first two are normal snake. And then when you get to 212, you go back over to 3-1. It throws everybody for a big loop. But if you have a last pick here, it's kind of awesome. And it's a way to uneven. It's a way right. to even out the, the, first the six, disparency seven, eight of having those first right. four to six picks. It's really an right. advantage in Superflex. And right one now. quarterback, don't worry about the reversal, I don't think. But in Superflex, right. I, you think, don't need I think it can help one. balance out. I've been actually liking it a lot since we've it's, kind of Yeah, Superflex third round reversal, I think that's... It is the it is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Yeah. Uh, so I took Brees, which I think really plays into my strategy here. I do want the hero, like you said, and I, and if I can get the hero. Speaking at, of Cooper Cup, that's the hero. That was a theme song for Cooper Cup's highlight video. It sure was when no when everybody hated him. We need a hero. Bonnie Tyler, I think, was the yeah. uh, artist there. Nice. Um, but Brees Hall falls right into there. So now I got my RB. I don't have to worry about it. And maybe he's not coming in, which could could maybe help this team if I'm not necessarily trying to win year one. You're going productive struggle. Now, the way I drafted this particular team, I would be trying to win year one, but we'll, we'll kind of double back to that. And I'll give you the options of how I would draft this team if I was not drafting, uh, you know, the win now and strictly go on assets, which is kind of what I'm going over here. Uh, so Brees Hall 211 and then it comes back to me at 311 because like I said it's the uh, it's the third round reversal so I took JSN there which I think is is fantastic this this guy's value is going to hang on and and hang around and and already just making waves and people are going to love him he's young he was the the best thing since sliced bread uh, for a while and I think he's not going to he's not going to disappoint and even if it's not awesome this rookie season the value is going to hang around um so, you know, right off the rip, we're, we're red on a quarterback, we're green on a running back, and now I'm probably not going to look at the running back slot again for a little while. I got JSN, so bang, right off the rip, I got value. I got a very tradable asset. Now, my next pick in this particular draft is Cooper Cup, 
which Bonnie Tyler. <laughs> I need a hero. Uh, that'd be my hero wide receiver. Should I get that sound bite? But you know, in, in this particular case, we'll, we'll kind of double back for afterwards. Um, but in this particular case, you could literally draft. A lot of the times, I've been getting um, London Drake at that spot. Drake London. Drake London. <laughs> Line and Drake is falling <laughs> at that spot, or you could get a Devonta Smith, or you could get a Higgins, or you could get DK. All those guys would give you, um, you know, the anti Cooper Cup and stay in that better asset available. People are going to be more excited about trading for that guy. Cooper Cup will certainly have value to a winning team, but it's going to be a whole lot more limited to who you can trade him to if things aren't going well for you. Well, you have Josh Allen, and Brees Hall, when he comes back, should score a bunch of points. He had people on their way to winning championships before he left out. And then <clears throat> you throw in Cooper Cup, you've kind of like hedged your bet a little bit. Right. Well, that's the you've idea of this particular team. Self to stay competitive. Right. And if you don't want to trade as much, you take a player like that instead of just right. straight youth. Sure. You need a couple of those sprinkled in. And I, that's doesn't just, have to be that soon, but Right. And how I usually draft it is with with a Cooper Cup in there and and some more guys who can help me win year 1, but for this particular exercise, we're going to we're going to shade a lot more towards the assets. And like I said, London Drake <laughs> Drake London <laughs> um is is usually I can sometimes get him around there. Devonta Let's Smith went, the ADP. went one before uh, Cooper Cup there, so I could have potentially had him. T Higgins, DK's down there, um, and if you know, so you know, a lot of lot of players still very much available for staying in your best asset available draft mindset, uh, and all those guys are going to be your league mates when Devonta Smith blows up week two because he had eight targets and two touchdowns you know people are going to t higgins same way dk metcalf same way so you know th those guys are going to skew more towards the, the the exact style that i'm talking about right here uh so those those would i just want to kind of give you options there yeah um so then your boy london drake is uh four one in our adp so basically could be almost could be right around yeah. there for him to be four one there's got to be some probably after and then some before uh, you know what I mean? So like yeah. sometimes he's going 311, maybe sometimes he's going 4-4. Four, four. And for um, those wondering, this is our own ADP from our own uh, off-season mock drafts that we've been doing over on the right. Patreons and Discord. So if you want to get a, get into that, get access to this ADP, be a part of making it, come over there. Come on over. And to the pleasure To chest. be an average, you usually have to be dancing around that number. So, right. you know, I, on a lot of these, I kind of have a little bit before and after. So, you know, that, that could be your different strategy at the four, at the five here, where I'm wrapping back around or coming back around. I got the I reaching got, back around. Reaching back around. <laughs> I, got, I got Quentin Johnston here, another just super young Love asset it. here where, you know, some people might not like them, but all it's going to take is two or three games in season. Yo. And that Charger offense is clicking and Kellen Moore, Kel, all the one of those other two guys get hurt or they get hurt, which they have had a history of doing. Or he's just running a muck wide of the fuck. Open. Right. And and you're you have Kellen Moore. And and while the sports radio and Kellen Moore, if it's working, they're going to be shouting oh, his praises. Oh, and can you believe the Cowboys, believe the let, Cowboys him let him go? Oh, and, we yeah. can say the word Cowboys, maybe even put it in the title. Quentin Johnston, you know, may get knocked for quote unquote body catches and not playing as big as he, but he also plays like a small receiver in that big body when he has the ball in his hand. So you got to take, mean, you got to take some and give some, right. You got to take some and give some. And I think the system that he's going into and the receivers that he's going to be around can show him the way. This is the way. Yeah. Um, Real cool. Let's see, where is he at in ADP? 509, 57 overall. So. Right, so 511, that's right in right in line. And if there weren't the haters and the pundits all pitching the, the softness or the body clapping or he's not as right. fast as we th thought he was, like that's why he's available right here and not right. further so up. I, th I think that's an outstanding so value, value with him. And, yeah. and it's gonna it's not going to take long, I don't think, if, if all goes well. And, and, you know, look, any draft pick you take here at any point – especially when you're drafting skewing a little younger you alluded to in the beginning they may not hit but they're at right. least going to hold value for a little while and if they have a will. couple if they have a couple of peakish games yep. somebody will come a knocking uh because they'll be like oh you know I, I they watched that game or it was a sunday night or a monday night or mm -hmm. whatever or mm -hmm. everybody's talking about that game they will come a knocking so this that's the idea of this strategy of playing into what the big draft pundits are kind of telling everybody because your league mates are hearing that. That's the idea here is that they are hearing what all these people are saying and these younger wide receivers are king. You got to stay young and, and you're, you're, you don't want to get anybody super old. So, you know, Quentin Johnston and T Higgins or Drake or Devonta Smith starting off with and, and JSN 
all of a sudden you got this ridiculous core. Then on the six, two, when I'm turning around from that Quentin Johnson, I take Traylon Burks, regardless if you like Traylon Burks or some other guys you could probably take in there. Maybe Jamison Williams is sitting around. Uh, mm. there, there's some other younger guys that you could take kind of in that area there, but Judy. Traylon Burks again, just a ton of upside. He was efficient with his touches. So, you know, the efficiency queens will like that. And they didn't do anything in the draft. Uh, right. And, and Nuke and, might sign. And maybe but Nuke signs there. But maybe I'm he not, signs by the time I drop I'm not this even all that worried about Yeah, Nuke I don't care about Nuke there. signing. Maybe I'll get him a little even cheaper then. Right. Traylon. But the fact they haven't done anything till now. Right. Maybe they've been banking on Nuke the whole time, but they would have already had him. We had Memphis on, and he likes to fuck around with, with Traylon being yeah, asthma <laughs> yeah, and, he was and fat. Really throwing and, some and he, he's been on that for a minute, which is kind of funny, but I'm, I'm drafting all the Traylon yeah, yeah. because when I did see him in limited action, yes, again, there are certain things that he doesn't do well. He's also as mad far at as, passing volume over there. Right, which, whatever. Right. I'm I'm fine with it. It's like just AJ, him. AJ Brown was fine in that passing volume, and I think Traylon Burks can have a similar type of game where his, his yak and run after catch. And they this, haven't even let him get loose with the... Right. And like, dude, you, 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 you're drafting players to play to their strengths and then teach them to get to the next step. And that's what you need to be doing with Traylon Burks. And they did that with their usage of him and how they were using him. So Traylon Burks is another great best asset available drafting him there. And then on the next pick, you're coming down to the seventh round. Um, and this is, this is where it gets into a little bit of a uh, young guy kind of dead zone. Uh, for me, in the last seventh rounds, I've been I've been looking at Hollywoods. I've been looking at uh, Deontay Johnsons. I've been looking at Dotson. I've been looking at Zay Flowers, Christian Kirk. All those guys are good options. None of them are super old. All of them are still very productive, or or have the chance to be very productive. I guess staying in this vein, Dotson would be the one that you would kind of want if he's hanging around. But I, you know, Hollywood, Deontay. Zay Flowers, um, Kirk, if any of those guys are around in those areas, I think those are all great draft picks at this point that everybody's going to want. The Hollywood and Deontay Johnsons are just going to be PPR monsters. Christian Kirk could could be as well. Um, and Zay Flowers, you, if you've been fucking with us, you know that Zay's one, been one of our, our guys. And sa same with Dotson. Like we were, we were putting yeah. Dotson uh, in the first round last year. Um, and all he did was come out and be, again, efficient. But <clears throat> All he did get, was score too knocked, many touchdowns. Get knocked for his efficiency. So when you don't like a guy, you knock him for efficiency because there has to be regression. And when you when you hated Najee coming out of college and you didn't like that he got first-round draft capital, you stay with the dumb shit. Instead of just being happy, he fucking gets a ton of volume and scores points. Whatever, dude. Like, I just, I feel like we just get too cute. And this is John this, Dawson scores too many touchdowns to sustain right. to be good. And now we do have a quarterback issue that we've had for a while there. Yeah. But well, Dawson's still, good, every, man. He still hashtag scored a good. touchdown. When you watch him play football, he's hashtag good. It's crazy. It's wild. Um, so, you know, I, I, again, staying in this vein, the, the whole idea of this draft is to, Get all of these guys be sexy on on the that the roster that everybody loves, be and then be able the to then go and trade for players who score points because you don't need to keep all these younger guys. You need you should keep some. The idea isn't to trade every single one of them away, but the idea is to go and trade a few of them away to get proven assets who can score you points. Which other people, you, you, the idea is that you're going to be able to get plus what you drafted these guys for, you're going to be able to trade Traylon Burks to, and go down to, uh, let's just say, we, we could even call it Hollywood Brown. We could draft Traylon Burks. We could go down to Hollywood Brown and get a first-round pick is the idea of what we're trying to do. I'm just lathering something on top. Especially Maybe if Hollywood right now starts could, off slow, right. Burks gets right. you some momentum that's, early. That's the idea. Bang, you hammer that out. And right. maybe you like Traylon, and, and you should be drafting players you like, mm -hmm. uh, but... You, you're still going to have to part ways with the guys who are going to give you the best return on investment here. Um, so, you know, I took Hollywood in this particular situation. Then I took Kenny Pickett because uh, I needed another quarterback. And the eighth round's a little bit of a weird dead zone. Now, you could have taken Kendra. You could have taken Charbonnet. Both of those guys would have been or, or a Mayer or a Laporta. And all those guys would have been a little bit better assets um, as far as sticking with this. I think Kenny Pickett's going to be a really good asset because I liked what I saw at the back half of that. Again, I know some people hate Kenny Pickett and some people aren't going to like that, but I think that's a really good asset 
to have. Um, and you, and obviously we needed another quarterback. So we took Kenny Pickett there and we'll back that up here in just a second with some reassurance, uh, with Kenny Pickett. But I know that if for, a, I, I could tell you exactly what I traded Kenny Pickett for. And you guys are going to say, well, that's a home league. Well, whatever. I don't give a, it doesn't matter. It's a fucking league. That's $150. Like I, I drafted Kenny Pickett for a few dollars in an auction and I traded Kenny Pickett, Tyler Algier and another scrub wide receiver away for, uh, Chris Olave and a motherfucking first like say what you want. You can be mad. I want to be in that league. Well, guess what? A lot of you idiots are in those leagues. Like, <laughs> like, you know, I, I, you know what? You know what that took about 65 offers to get that fucking done. And it's persistence. And it's just, hey, Kenny's hot. Kenny did some shit. People are liking Kenny. I found the guy who loved Kenny and we went back and forth. Was it a Steelers guy? Times. No. Uh, but he just he needed a quarterback because there's inevitably somebody's going to have and and guess what Kenny's young and he runs a little bit and he's got some of those the moxie right so you know you can hate it if you want but Kenny's an asset now going to the ninth round here Darren Waller went right in front of me which was a bummer uh, I really wanted some Darren Waller uh, so I took Schultz I've been a big proponent of Schultz in the late round because this is tight end premium. Um, and then Laporta, which I like to stack a, a little bit veteran with a with a rookie kind of guy here. And Laporta went right after that, right on the turn there. Uh, so, you know, Waller went right before me, which would have been my pick. Then then I took Schultz and then Laporta went right before I got back. But then I came back. Would and you I have got, taken Laporta? Um, I would have been fine with taking Laporta. Laporta and feels like in the vein of your spiel. Right. A hundred percent. And I get it. Like you guys I think can, you might have already said that you guys can tell me I threw mayor out earlier. You guys can tell me about rookie tight ends and all this other shit and not drafting tight ends. I've had fucking phenomenal success drafting a bunch of younger tight ends and tight end premium and being able to use them in packages to make deals happen. Like that, ooh, that, that guy might be that's good. Been, right. And everybody needs a tight and... end. Like there's four of them that you like, like, so, you know, I, I just, I can't, I can't understand that, that logic besides that's what everybody's on. And that's what all these guys keep saying, but I don't find that to be the case at all. Like just don't draft a bunch of dingleberries. Um, but anyway, at 10, at 10, there wasn't a receiver to take here. I could have taken like a Rashi Rice uh, or a Mingo, but I took A-Chain because those guys are just higher. In A-Chain, I needed a running back for one and two, which I don't get caught up in because this is just a, a draft, or just a, the draft. I can, I can, I'm drafting these guys and these assets to be able to fill my running back spot out when I need it, not when I, I don't need to have a great running back core to start off with. That's, again, the idea here. Uh, so I took A-Chain, who, again, is above Rice and above Mingo and just about every rookie startup that you do. So I felt like there was more that was more of an asset to take there so I can move off of A-Chain and or keep A-Chain. Maybe it's awesome. Uh, well, but, if Dalvin doesn't go there, then he's like, oh, shit, right. wheels back up. But again, awesome, awesome, awesome uh, asset there. And then I came back around and, and I got Matthew Stafford there to kind of combat my Kenny Pickett if it doesn't work out and I'm in a winning mode because I'm drafting this team a certain way uh, to have some winning pieces on it and if some of those younger guys hit I'm good to go not much for the discussion here but just the validation of Kenny Pickett and Matthew Stafford backing those guys up together look Stafford was a fucking league winner two years ago this guy was first in touchdown passes first in yardage outrageous and completion percentage uh and you know we forget so quickly how uh, was 34 and recently right. buys but we'll, we got a whole other episode coming out about cheap super flex quarterbacks um so then we get to the and then and, and at, at 111 if your quarterback position was a little different you have mcbride mims elijah moore spears chig downs sky Moore, all those guys are available and fitting right in this vein so you could pick and choose which one of those guys you would kind of want and McBride again and Chig going back to you. There's a bunch of people. I know Scott Connors, who we've had on here, who's, you know, pretty anti tight end through our he's he's telling you not to draft uh, these these younger guys because, oh, where are the where are the show me where you could tr tr trade a two and a three for for Chig because I've been trying to do it all over the place. Like, dude, it's possible. And if Chig comes out week one and fucking crushes because they don't have a bunch of people, you're going to be able to get whatever you want for Chig. Uh, and, the, and the price is still right. We're in the 11th round. Same thing with McBride. Like through this season, I think McBride is absolutely going to slay. He's been one of my favorites since the offseason, since like January or February. Um, McBride or Sky Moore? McBride. Yeah? Right. No, but like who would you rather have? Oh, I'm taking McBride. 
Okay. Yeah, this is tight end premium. I'm like, on the clock here. This is mock soon, and I got them both in my query. We're, we're taking uh, um, again, this like is premium. Like I said, it's only like barely premium. Okay, uh, right. One point five is Re- like barely premium. Regardless, Casey. McBride's a receiver at 2. that position. Is really, where we're he at gives them some size. We're talking the eleventh, twelfth round. I-, I loved everything about him. You saw in spurts how good he, how effective and good he could be as a rookie. And then look at the target share and look at the domination Ertz was having. And now it's a different offense, but like, dude, they have no size. They have, they like McBride could easily just sit in the middle of that field, soak up targets and dominate in the red zone and be in the top five of tight ends drafted for the next five years. Uh, So, you know, I'm going to take my chances on Chig. I'm going to take my chances on McBride and this best asset available because to me and in my uh, experience, I've had excellent, uh, results trading uh hot commodities of younger premium tight ends uh so you know uh that would be uh all those people that i would keep in mind there if you already had a quarterback and didn't want to draft stafford there i took aj Dillon on the next one spears roshan sky Moore, all kind of stay around there downs spears potentially could be hanging around all different guys rather than Dillon. if you need a different asset there um, or you could start looking at some older wide receivers, but for the most part, we're going to, for this particular drill, we're going to keep hammering younger first, second, third year wide receivers. So Mooney doesn't count. Um, uh, no, but I think there is some upside in Mooney, but I also think there's a lot of upside in AJ Dillon at 12 too. I've sure. been smashing AJ Dillon. Yeah. That's um, easy to get behind. And you know, but if you want to know, bring it back around at the end of last year, right? It seemed like there must've been something not right at the beginning of the season. Cause then I remember being like. Since when? When it? Where has this been? This is right. AJ Dillon. There. I know We've it was seen like it. week He's nine, been ten. Yeah, I don't know when He's it was. Been good. It was like this is the fuck. This is the bowling ball. And we're gonna get back to who can to catch breaking in a new quarterback. Right. And, and we know that the they roots are the roots of that system is in a little bit more of a running attack. And yep. I, and and uh, AJ not AJ. Um, who, who's there? Aaron Jones. Aaron Jones is on a contract basically on his way out, and Dylan could be the guy. I think Dylan might be in a contract year as well, uh, but. I, I, AJ Dillon to me is is kind of right in that vein, but if you wanted to go skew a little younger because you like Spears or you like Roshan or you like Sky Moore, fine. Again, we don't on this particular draft. I'm drafting to still kind of stay in it, but for the 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 um, purposes of this drill, the, the purposes of the drill. Thank you. Um, is you know sticking with maybe some younger guys, and then we move down. Dillon is a free agent after this year. Right, they're both so could be could be good for him, or he sticks. They sign him again in Green Bay because things are going well. Um, and AJ Dillon looks like that dude. Uh, 13th round, CEH, uh, you have, you, again, Sky Moore's hanging around somewhere around there in our ADP. Rondell Moore, Romeo Dubs. I know some people don't like Romeo, but whatever. Like, again, you could sh- cite some efficiency metrics with with Romeo. You know what I saw with Romeo Dubs? A guy who could get open in the NFL. And there was plenty of times deep. that I saw that man. Yeah. I watched him. Because I, I do this crazy thing where I watch a lot of football games. Like, Get out. I don't just watch the red zone and be like, oh, well, I know everything I need to know because I watch the red zone. Yeah. I watch a lot of football games in season. And Romeo Dubs as a rookie was operating extremely well and being able to get open he had some shitty drops and yeah. the hands weren't where you wanted him to be but i think romeo dubs has just as good as possibility of being the lead dog in this offense as anybody yeah as fucking anybody i yeah. think christian watson's really good um sure and and was very efficient at times as well catching a bunch of touchdowns also was really good without romeo dubs uh, romeo came back we saw everything kind of balance back out. I think Romeo could easily who's we talk about this all the time. Who's going to be the guy for the new quarterback? Well, in the preseason when love was playing without Watson and had dubs in there, they were connected. Right. Who's going to be the guy? They were probably second string together for a while. And like, you know, um, we, we see it all the time. Quarterback changes. It's a different guy. They like different guys in the progressions. They like different guys on different routes and different reads. Right. It's just kind of how it goes. Like, you know, I, I've, if you've played Madden for a while, if you, you have a certain style, of how you like to get guys open and then you put who you want in those spots because that's who you want running that route um and and it, it could be it, you know it could be romeo in the third you know and rondell is is right there he was awesome uh in his short time he needs to stay healthy again same thing with sky Moore was 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 okay on the field it's kind of wide open over there we don't exactly know what's going to happen uh we gotta I, take mcbride though Sure, I'll take McBride over. Back to the board. Packers real quick. Aaron Jones contract that says they have a potential out in 2023 oh, with 18 dead. It would still be 12 dead next year. 
So Aaron Jones is almost more, like at on paper right now. Potentially hanging around a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we get to 14-2. Uh, I took Wandell there. I think that falls right in line with what we're trying to do. But again, we're back to the Nikos, the Tillmans, the Hodgins, uh, Isaiah Hodgins, that is. Um, you know, we're, we're back to drafting a bunch of younger guys, uh, the Alec Pierces of the world, the Mechies, um, you know, any of those guys who kind of hang around a little bit later to, again, just keep stabbing on the younger guys. And what this is going to do is going to make you attracted to any time those guys have an ebb and flow, uh, that how quickly you can turn these things around into future draft picks plus another good player. And that's how I want to play. I want to, I want to, for me personally, this is going to make me, I've beat this drum to death on this episode, but I want to draft these younger guys and just have a, a slew of these guys because this is what everybody's pushing. This is what everybody's hearing. This is what everybody's listening to. So, you know, a lot of the times we'll say you got to zig when everybody else is zagging or zag when everybody else is zigging, however you want to say that. Uh, but here you can take this strategy, draft all of these guys because this is what everybody is talking about and everybody wants and then exploit it. Go get your Najee Harris's who score points or Josh Jacobs who score points because for, you know, Josh Jacobs is a lot like Najee Harris. Everybody fucking hates him. Oh, he, he didn't even play in the Hall of Fame game. He got out snapped by this guy. Well, what does he go and do? He just keeps putting up RB fucking one numbers. So keep fucking hating. Keep listening to these idiots who don't want points on their team. So use this strategy draft all of these guys and then go ahead and trade for Amari Cooper in season when your team's doing well or don't because maybe your team's not doing well and you don't want to trade for Amari Cooper that get picks grab picks in the next and just you can keep rolling this over week year after year or hope you don't want to roll it over year after year because we don't want to get caught we can roll it over a year and still be fine and be just Four or five first rounds coming into the next and be in complete control of this league of being able to gather whatever assets you want wherever you're deficient. Because nine times out of ten, you're going to go in and leave a startup and you're going to be deficient out of position. It is really hard to go in here. Yeah, you can fool yourself and say that you're not, but it's really hard to go in there. And even if you're drafting to quote unquote be balanced, which is not going to give you the best value in the draft. It's hard to leave. Like it's it's going to be in super flex. It's either going to be a quarterback, you're going to be or a uh, uh, your flex or your running back position. It's going to be hard to come out of there and not be deficient at one. So you need to have enough assets to be able to trade into those positions. And at some point, I'm going to stop trading four picks and start trading picks away to try to go ahead and win a championship for two or three years in a row. Because at the end of the day, that's the that's the idea. And I think we get so caught up and dynasty twitter and dynasty and the beauty contest that this is um and you know yeah you don't want to be caught with your pants down and have a shitty old roster and just age out but it's okay to shoot for you know a three four year window and try to win two out of four uh and then you know hey we're gonna go back to the drawing board we still have a couple of manageable pieces we'll trade those away and we'll you know we'll go back to exactly where we were uh, in the beginning of this thing and eat a little bit of shit for a year or two and then hopefully come right and be right back. Right. That's, that's the cycle of this thing right. that we're trying to do. At the end goal is you'll have still some young pieces to do what you want with. You'll have a bunch of picks and then you can do whatever you want. You can make the moves you want to make to go make a push for a championship. Right. You, you position yourself to be in that position to get whatever you want. You can go get whoever you want. Who's your right. favorite older running back they can go score you points right. and i don't want anyone get to get confused and like come out of a draft with like 18 wide receivers you know what i mean like right. it, it has to make sense like he gave a, he did a good job of like giving you a range of win and what players would go and then as you see he didn't like i don't know if you plan on doing the strategy this whole entire mock i know you gave some examples of pivoting off but like for instance if if good players fall down too far don't be forcing the wide receiver just because Casey told you to take the young wide receiver. You know, for instance, like like Dalvin or uh, James Cook, if he falls too far, like he went 10-6 here, I took him. If he keeps falling down, you got to take James Cook because he's also like a guy that if he does anything, people yeah. are going to be all over. And then you can you can double you can back up your your uh, it, cheap insurance policy with uh, Damian Harris there. You know, so that I like that move. Um, and if like you know, don't be afraid to take a different 
p- skill position player. But yeah, when you don't sure. know, find that young wide receiver. Or if it makes sense, take or that young wide when, receiver. When you, or, and, pr- and target them, prioritize them early. Or when you, like I said, when you get into those dead zones, like I did take the A-chains, and you can take the spears, and you, you take the running or the but Roshans. If, like, or, if Mike or the Evans is available or, like in the 13th round or something stupid, like too right. late, then you can take him and maybe he helps you win. Right, and getting and back maybe to maybe a couple other pieces hit. How I typically will draft these teams i won't go super all young but i will take the cooper cup because he falls and then i'll take the hollywood brown because he's going to score me points and then I, you, you know, took a bunch of other young I, shots right and but i still I, I fill my roster out around those guys with a couple of, like if it starts going well because i have cooper cup and i have hollywood brown or whoever you want to fill into there and i have josh allen and kenny pickett's playing well or stafford's playing well and schultz is scoring points like now I can't. I still have the flexibility of options to move around. And, and again, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a bunch of different drafts that we do, and just how it was feeling, what you were thinking going in, because that's the point of mocks. You're you're, you're trying to you know you're explore different, different options you know? and seeing you know. And sometimes you're going in with one thing, like we're doing one right now, where I went in with with one idea, and it didn't really it, it was panned out really well for like the first five rounds. And then we got into spots where it just wasn't quite working out. So I wasn't going to force it with what the idea was. And I started going a different direction thinking, you know, hey, I can still trade for the the things that I wanted, but I'm going to go ahead and again, I'm going to start collecting these assets if nobody wants them right here. I drafted to win up here, but hey, fuck it. I'm, if you're going to give me these, I'm going to take these assets instead of just drafting, you know, DeAndre Hopkins out of place here because I wanted to win. Uh, you know, I'm not going to reach for him, but you know, just, just those kind of deals. So again, to me, uh, this has been my favorite strategy last year. I did this on a, on a super flex tight end premium squad. And I ended up with, uh, DK Metcalf, Jalen Waddle, uh, Brandon, Ayuk, DJ Moore, um, Jerry, Judy, uh, Isaiah Hodgins picked him up. I did draft Jalen Tolbert. That didn't work out. Uh, hope maybe it will this year. I drafted David Bell. That didn't work out. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But I also drafted Jahan Dotson. I traded for Christian or uh, Chris Olave. I, I bit the bullet on Jamison Williams for a season, and I drafted him. I also have Sky Moore on that team. That didn't work out, but maybe it will this season. Uh, and then I have Chig and Dallas Goddard and Noah Fant. That didn't work out, Noah Fant, but maybe maybe it can, maybe it won't. But then I also have uh, Trey McBride. Uh, so, you know, and the only running backs I drafted were Brees Hall and James Cook. And I sucked last year. I have three first-round picks. <laughs> couple of twos, couple of threes. Um, at least you're good at that. And, you know, so sucking. I, I have a ridiculous roster and my quarterbacks are Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott and Derek Carr. So like I'm not, I'm really the, the, the place I'm deficient at is running back. And that was my plan going into there is to be deficient at running back. But I have so and I had Kenny Pickett. That was the same league where I traded Kenny Pickett away. Traded and Zach Wilson away. I traded Zach Wilson. Away. I got Zach Wilson and, and some garbage. And I ended up getting DJ Moore because the owner was frustrated with DJ Moore week in, week out Listening at the beginning of the season with Pan, with the Panthers and needed a fucking quarterback. And Zach Wilson was still playing for them. So, it, it, you know, again, a bunch of trade offers. I, I spam the league. And that's what it's going to take. Um, and again, we'll go over this multitude of different ways and multitude of thinking and and how we did this but i just wanted to lay this out this has been my favorite strategy to go with over the last couple of years because it does it keeps you attractive to your league mates and if you want to be active i think it's the easiest way to to gain value and trade yourself into off that sexy roster into a winning roster because the sexy roster isn't going to win you win your leagues even though dynasty twitter will give you a lot of hearts and thumbs up and and quote tweets about it but that shit ain't gonna win bubba it's not like you need guys who are i again start and how we and how we fit or uh and how we started like you know i feel like a lot of dudes out here talking about this shit seem to be allergic to actually scoring fantasy points like we just had memphis on i think he's a great example of He's not scared to have fucking the unsexy trend. roster yeah. and actually fucking win because that's what yeah. we're here to do. Yeah. Um, and hell yeah. Can I get a hell yeah? Uh, so anyway, I'm done with my diatribe on this one. We'll be back with, with some more of these. And like I said, I want to keep walking through different strategies, different. Hey, I, I did this in a draft. I came in with this idea. But that's 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 like one of the most important parts of this is, is being able to be fluid and, and feeling comfortable in your draft to do this and that. And obviously in mocks, we're not able to trade. Um, picks but uh, so hope you enjoyed it Uh, be sure to like subscribe comment below all that jazz Um, 
and you know if you're we're doing ADP a uh, ton of mock drafts on 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 the Patreons and if follow us on on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty we usually grab some publics and sometimes we'll do full public mocks just to keep the average of the uh, so it's not the same you know 50 60 guys doing this the ADP over and over again and and some of these ADPs I see out there that some people are quoting values on I'm like dude that's fucking trash like there's no way you're getting that guy there and some people may think the same about ours but. You know, just let's just what we could do is we could unnormalize that homeless shelter that they call keep trade cut because that is hot <laughs> fucking unnormalize trash it. of I don't, that is not a pulse of value. That is a pulse of abnormalize it garbage. <laughs> like, hey, you got to click these couple of boxes before you start. So just click whatever boxes you want. And that'll tell you the pulse of Dynasty Fantasy. It, it, yeah. it won't. It will not. Uh, so I take it if, very if, seriously. If Every time it, I think about it for like 15 right. minutes I, I before like, I enter the I site. I consult my own spreadsheet and yeah. then I go back. Like, no, you don't. No, and 60% of the people clicking on that don't. They yeah. just irrationally click buttons that semi make sense. And that, that, is, that is a terrible barometer. Anybody quoting that fucking ADP, get rid of them. <laughs> well, with that being said, if that wasn't you... Uh, Make sure you hit that five star review on the podcast. And draft tight ends. <laughs> Fuck these other dudes. They're wrong. They're fucking wrong. I have success drafting good, good success. Young tight ends. How do you feel about this show? Was it a great success? I don't know. Was it the best? It wasn't the best. Dynasty but startup draft strategy? It's the only one you will need. All right. It's the only one. You I'm will not going to pivot to that title. I'm going to stick with the original, I think, because I think I think people want the best. and we, we did our best. It's not the it's not the best draft strategy in the world. It's just a tribute. <laughs> that being said, you got anything else? No. <laughs> Appreciate you Crush that beer. Peace.